Okay, so if you can use a ruler or a tape measure, then you should be able to do this little basic problem. And uh, you can see here it says, what are the fractions? I'm talking about these points here between 0 and 1. Okay, so we've got this point, uh, this point, and this point. And then I got a couple bonus points right there. And I just want you to uh, indicate what these fractions are. All right, just think of this as reading a ruler or a tape measure, which every household uh pretty much has. So for the most part, okay, the majority of people, I don't know if it's exactly 99%, but I'm pretty sure that most people can read a ruler or a tape measure. So the question is, can you? And I'm pretty confident that you uh, can. And if you can't, no big deal. We'll walk you through uh, what these points are, right? Because this is important stuff. This is basic fraction uh, kind of concepts that you learn in elementary school. But you know what? Hey, if you're rusty on fractions, stick around for a minute or two and we'll go through and highlight precisely uh, what these points are on, uh, you know, this could be a ruler again, it could be a tape measure, it could be zero to one inch, uh, but this is important stuff. I mean, just think about it, you know, how many times have you, you know, do you need to like use your tape measure in your house, okay? You probably use your tape measure more than you are, uh, use your ruler, okay? Now, why would you use your tape measure? You might be like, oh, let me check out this, my room, does this piece of furniture fit right here, and quickly, you know, look at the numbers. Now, sometimes you're estimating, but you know, you know, if you want to be precise, you need to be able to read these fractions. All right, so we're going to get into this in just one second. Of course, if you think you can do this, pause the video and just knock this out. It'll take you all of about 12 seconds to read this properly. So I'm going to go through this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. So if you're interested in my math help program, you can find a link to it in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, high set task, uh, CLEP exam, ACUPLACER, ALEX exam, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, many other type of exams, they all have math on them. I can help you out. So just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. I should have your exam. If I do not, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool math learning program. And then obviously I help those of you that are just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to improve in mathematics, then you got to be serious about taking notes. Uh, and this is an everyday discipline. This means, you know, you have to be focused every single day. But that's the key to success. And uh, over decades of teaching mathematics, there's one thing I can point to that's remained consistent. That those students who take great math notes almost always do excellent in mathematics. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to look at their cell phone just a little bit too much and forget they're even at school because they're just so absorbed in that little device. And thank goodness those devices weren't around in the 1980s because if they were, I may not have even graduated. So I get it. I mean, they're powerful devices uh, and they're useful and necessary, you know, probably these days uh, to some degree. But um, they're also your kind of worst enemy when you're going into your, I mean, not only your math class, anything. You've got to learn how to put that thing away and focus. Because if you can't focus, you're not going to be successful at uh, any endeavor, right? So focus is the key. But as you're improving your note-taking, you can use my notes to study. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's go down and take a look at this. We'll walk through... Um, each little um, part of this, um, you know, call it like a, let's call it like between zero and one inch or one foot. Doesn't make a difference. We're going to walk through these fractions and let's start off with this guy right here. Okay. So, you know, uh, hopefully it's easily recognized. This thing is the half, right? We split this between zero and one. This is halfway through. So this would be the fraction one half. Okay, so if you got that right, very, very good. Now, what happens when you split a one half? Okay, in other words, what's this guy right here? Well, this is the fraction one fourth, one quarter. Now, let's kind of explore this a little bit uh, in detail here. So I have one half of my ruler there, 
and I got the other half right here. So this is one half, and this is one half, right? So it was one divided by two is one half, right? So we took one, we divided it by two, I got one half. So if I take this one half and I divide it by two, I'm gonna end up with one fourth. So let's just look at this from a fractional standpoint. One half, I divide it by two, okay? It's basic fraction stuff here. So you get one half, let me kind of go down here, because this wouldn't be fun if we weren't, you know, doing some um, fraction math to kind of reinforce why these points are the way they are. So one half divided by two, what happens is you change this to multiplication when you do this problem, and you flip this guy. So this is really uh, two over one. Anything divided by one is uh, itself, <clears throat> excuse me, so two over one is two. So when we flip this, this is one half. Now, when we multiply fractions, we just multiply across, so that's one times one, that's one, two times two, that is four. Interesting, right? So one half divided by two is in fact one fourth. That's that fraction right there. So that's the kind of stuff I really kind of want to, you know, in, uh, you know, if you can read the fractions, that's excellent, but you shouldn't, you know, back this up with your knowledge of, you know, working with fractions from a mathematical standpoint. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up here. And uh, so let's start with this guy right over here. So again, I'm at one half, but um, what's this point here? Well, I'm trying to, I want another quarter, one fourth, okay? This is three fourths, okay? Interesting, three fourths. So why would that be three fourths? Well, I took a quarter, all right? I have one half, but I added one fourth to it and I ended up at three fourths. So let's just do this this way, one half, plus one-fourth, hmm, is that three-fourths? Well, you gotta know how to deal with fractions. One-half, I can write that as a fraction. It has to have the same denominator as this guy. So I can fix this up by multiplying this by two and this by two. So this is two over four plus one over four. So now I can uh, add the numerators. When you're adding fractions, two plus one, that's three over four, that's three-fourths. All right, so there's a lot of different ways we can kind of play around with this. I mean, if you're getting these values right, if you're like, oh yeah, this is three-fourths, this is one-half, this is one-fourth, then that's excellent. Okay, that's the whole point of this video. But, you know, you know, I'm a math guy. I want to, like, reinforce these concepts. All right, let's finish up with our last little two things here. So what is half of a one-fourth? So here's, um, I'm at one-fourth, but if I go halfway through, uh, what would that be? Well, this would be one-eighth. That would be one-eighth. If you got that right, that's excellent. So if this is one-eighth, and this is another one-eighth, so I'm doing what? Well, that's one-eighth plus one-eighth. It should land me right here, one-fourth. Well, it does, because here, these denominators are the same, so that's two-eighths, two-eighths. Then I can reduce that. That's one-fourth, okay? So, but here, one-fourth is the same thing as two eighths. So at this point, if I add another eighth to it, uh, two eighths plus one eighth, and again, two eighths is the same thing as one fourth, is what? That's three eighths. Three eighths. And that's that point there. Yeah, okay, we could continue to go on and on. But if I'm like, hey, if you got all of these little points right, all right, that's excellent. Okay. Now, even if you didn't get the eighths correct, don't panic. If you got the one fourth, the one half, and the three fourths, I'll still give you a nice little a happy face with a check mark, but if you got all this other stuff right, then I must give you your A plus and your 100% for today. That's very good. And if you understand the arithmetic involved here, that's even better. Okay, so fractions, they're everywhere, right? I mean, tape measures, pretty much 99% uh, of the households out there have a tape measure or ruler, and it's a good idea to know how to read one, right? And this is kind of the, the basics, the fundamentals. And then, of course, there's even other little crazier things on the ruler. We can get into the 16th, 1 16th, and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, really, you know, there is no escaping mathematics, at least in our modern life. It's everywhere. Uh, so, um, you know, what do I try to do? I try to make this kind of, this stuff kind of fun, right? It's just like, hey, listen, if you got to learn math or if you got to review math, let's make it non-boring, okay? All right, so if this video was in some tiny way enjoyable, please consider smashing that uh, like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, um, math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. So whatever level you're at, I'm pretty sure I can help you out. Um, 
my goal is to try to make math clear and understandable. All right. So even if you think you're terrible at math, you're really not terrible in mathematics. I'm just telling you right now, you might believe that, but that's not the case. What you need to do is find yourself a teacher that you like and understand and start building up your math skills. Believe me, I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff over decades of teaching math. And, uh, you know, whatever you think you are, that's what you are. So if you're like, I know I am bad at math, well, you will remain bad at math. If you tell yourself, I can be good at math, you will become good at math. All right. So your brain is com just in charge of everything. It's completely powerful. So um, find yourself a teacher, whether it's me or someone else that you like and understand, that's going to be the secret to success. Of course, you got to do your part. Take those good math notes. Talk to your math teacher. Do the hard work. Practice, practice, practice. All right. So um, if you uh, want more help from me, okay, I'd strongly encourage you to check out my math help program if you're any kind of uh, formal math class because this is my most comprehensive stuff. At least take a quick look at it so you know that uh, it's kind of an option. But again, I'm posting stuff on YouTube all the time. It's all there for you to use. And um, I try to read the comments. Uh, I need to be better at that. I do get a lot of comments and a lot of views. I'm grateful for, for that. But if you are interested in any particular topic, reach out to me either directly in my website or through the comments, and I'll try to make uh, videos that you're more interested in. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.